Hello, once again, AP Calc AP students. Mr. Record here with our th example three video. This will be our second overall video with topic 8.1. And it's going to cover our final example where we're going to be talking about a free response question that uses the ideas of the average value of a function. So you got milk. Let's see. Cows on a small dairy farm in northern Indiana are milked in the morning during a two-hour period. Milk from the cows is pumped into a storage tank, and the volume of milk in the tank at time t is modeled by a strictly increasing twice differentiable function, m. And m of t is measured in gallons, and t is measured in minutes. At time t, there are 300 gallons of milk in the storage tank. Values of m and t at selected times are given in the table. And I've got three very different kinds of questions that I'm going to ask that draw upon a lot of ideas that we've already seen in previous units of the course. So this is going to serve as a really good review problem uh, getting ready for the AP exam. So first of all, we're going to start with estimating M prime of 70, an idea that we talked about a long time ago. You want to indicate the units of measure and explain what that answer means. Well, Again, when you're taking a derivative of a table, the only way that you can possibly pull that off is to estimate. And that's what the directions say you want to estimate. So where do you find 70 for a time in your table? Well, you don't. It's probably going to be somewhere between 50 and 90, though. And so what you can do is you can use the m value at 90 and the m value at 50, and if you subtract those two, all the while dividing by the difference between 90 and 50, this will serve as your estimate, and I probably should put approximately equals at that point. I think that's a safer symbol to use. Um, it's likely that you wouldn't get deducted on the AP exam for that, but I don't like to take any chances, so let's use good notation. Now we can say that that is equivalent to, and we can do our subtraction, 3,360 minus 1,640, and that would be all over 40, of course. And this is a calculator active question. And in, in order to speed up the video, I'm not going to type in mundane calculations like this into your calculator. I'm sure that you could get 1,720 fairly easily. And if you left your answer like this, or like this with the check mark, or if you actually found the answer, which is 43, a nice answer like that, you would earn the answer point because they're all numerically equivalent. You do need a label, and the label would be gallons per minute. Note <clears throat> you're taking the difference of gallons on top and the difference of minutes on bottom. Now, what you want to do is now interpret this using the NUT feature. So because we have a rate that's a positive 43, we could say that, um, well, the amount of milk, that's certainly what this stands for, the amount of milk, well, what's this milk doing? Well, we're, we're milking cows, and it's pumped into a storage tank. And the volume is what's modeled here. It's the volume in the storage tank. So the amount of milk in the tank is increasing. Because we have this positive derivative, this is the word that we want. We really need to see that word increasing. And it's increasing by 43 gallons per minute. But we need to finish it off by giving it a specific time, and that would be specifically at time t equals 70 minutes, at the 70th minute mark. And that would take care of a really great explanation for part A and would earn likely two points. Part B, use the data in the table to evaluate the definite integral of m prime of t from 0 to 120 use units, interpret the meaning. Well, this is a little bit more into our recent material, unit six per se, and we have to think about if we are going to integrate an m prime, we just simply realize that, well, the integration symbol and the prime symbol are gonna do away with each other. They're basically going to cancel each other out, and so you would just get m. 
use the fundamental theorem of calculus to evaluate at your upper boundary, subtract evaluation at your lower boundary, and you essentially read these right from the table. 4,250 minus 300. This turns out to be 3,950. And once again, we want units and we want an interpretation. Well, by the time you realize that this is M, hopefully you realize that this is gallons, right? Gallons of milk. Now, what is the interpretation? Well, over the span of time, this is the accumulated amount of this object, this item that we have acquired. So we could say that 3,950 gallons of milk Let's spell milk right. Try that again. Gallons of milk have been added to the storage tank. You could say have entered the storage tank. That would work as well. But we just have to say some type of like an accumulative kind of uh, phrase. And I'm just going to go with have been added to the tank. Now that's not going to be enough. I think you've done a good job with your noun. You've got some units in here, but we don't have the time element. And so we're going to have to make sure that we indicate that by saying from t equals 0 to t equal 120 minutes. If you said during those two hours, that probably would be OK. Um, but I always like to reference exactly what the t values are in the table. And I think that's going to take care of it. And that's going to give us probably a couple of points there for part B. Let's read part C here, our last part. Use a right Riemann sum with four subintervals indicated by the data in the table to approximate 1 over 120 times the integral from 0 to 120 of m of t. Explain the meaning of this expression in the context of the problem. And then does this approximation overestimate or underestimate the exact value of that definite integral? Explain your reasoning. All right. Well, it may have been a while or two since we've done our work with uh, Riemann sum. So we're going to review that. Basically, what you've got here is a Riemann sum that's got this 1 over 120 in front that we're going to address here in just a little bit. But I want to drop that in so I don't forget him. Now let's go ahead and look at our table. Understand that we're looking for a right Riemann sum, four subintervals. So if we go to our table, it looks like four is a great number because one, two, three, four just works ever so perfectly. If we want the right side, we're talking about using these four values here as the height of each of our rectangles. The only other thing that we have to determine are these rectangles built in such a way that they have equal widths. Well, if I just subtract the difference between these two t's, I see 20, and then I see 30, and then 40, and then back to 30. So these guys are just all over the place. So essentially what you're going to do is just multiply these connected numbers that I have and then add their results to get the Riemann sum. All right, so if I go back here, I forgot my 120 there. So if I go back here, I'm going to have to scroll back and forth, so I apologize for that. 20 times 780 is going to start things off for my first rectangle. And then to that, I'm going to add 30 times 1,640. And then to that, 40 times 3,360. And finally, 30 times 4,250. Once again, I am fairly confident that you guys could pull this off uh, using your calculator. I'm going to do this for you and show that you would get this 1 over 120 out in front. And this is a pretty large number, as you can probably imagine. It's 326,700 all of the contents there within the brackets. And once you divide by 120, 
you actually get 2,722.5. Now we have to think about what is our units, and that's really interesting here because we've got something here that's measured in M and DT. Now if you remember, M is gallons, right? M stands for gallons of milk. T, of course, is time in minutes. So we have gallons times minutes. But by the time we divide this by 120, which is actually minutes in the denominator, the minutes will cancel, and we essentially have gallons again. But the interpretation is really where the key is, because this is going to be truly what the 8.1 topic is all about. And the fact that we have a 1 over b minus a in front of our integration from a to b, which means this is the average value. OK, well, that's good to know. It's the average value. Average value of what? Well, it's the average value of the function m. Well, m stands for the amount of milk going into the storage tank. So the average value, or how about we say the average number of gallons? If you said the average value of the number of gallons, that's OK, but we normally wouldn't talk like that. I think this is probably a little clearer. They would both earn credit. So the average number of gallons um, in the tank, but we have to have a time interval. And that time interval is going to be from t equals 0 minutes to t equal 120 minutes. And it's probably given that this is gallons of milk, but I could write that in there to be a little clearer, and I probably should have. So the average number of gallons of milk in the tank from time 0 to time 120 is 2,722.5 gallons. Now to finish up, we have to determine is this an overestimate or an underestimate in this particular problem. So we are going to do that by understanding a couple of things. First of all, something that we haven't taken into consideration is that this function m is increasing, strictly increasing. So what that means is I would have a function, if I were to graph it, it might look something like this, let's say, strictly increasing. OK, well, what does that mean? Well, if we were to partition this off into so many different rectangles. I know we were supposed to use four, and if I cap them off with the right endpoint, then it's pretty clear that my areas that I'm going to obtain are going to contain these extra spaces that I don't really want, and therefore I am going to have an overestimate in this particular case. So we're just going to basically declare that, we're going to say that this is an overestimate. Now we have to state why we know that this is an overestimate. Explain your reasoning, and you can basically say it's because m of t is increasing. That would do the job if you want to put a little bit of flair, a little finishing touch. We could say m of t is increasing and we used a right Riemann sum. You don't really have to say we used a right Riemann sum. It's not necessary. And the reason is because of the fact that uh, the problem stated that. It's obvious. But it's always nice to kind of circle back to certain things to make your uh, explanation a little clearer. So got milk. There we go. That takes care of our example three. Nice. AP review from some previous things. We had unit two, we had unit six, and we had a little bit of unit eight mixed together. Hopefully this helps out. We'll see you uh, next time when we talk about some 8.2 material. If you like what you see, be sure to subscribe. Thanks for joining.